Hello, this is Rachel with Give Me Some Sugar, where I talk about how to live your life to the fullest alongside your diabetes. So today we are talking about using an insulin pen. So the reasons why you should know how to use insulin pens is because they are much easier to use than syringe and vials. They are better if you have some sort of dexterity issue or if you have difficulty seeing or hearing in some way. They're just much more user-friendly. They are also more portable. So in terms of traveling and just having as a backup in your kit, These are going to be a lot easier to bring along with you different places. And as a pump user, you should really understand how to use an insulin pen. I would ask your doctor to send in some short-acting insulin and some long-acting insulin. So like Novolog and Vasoglar or Lantus to your pharmacy so that these can be used in the event of what we call pump failure. And that way those are at your pharmacy just in case your pump decides to crap out and you're going to need to kind of switch back to doing injections. So those will be available to you and you will know how to use them. So there are lots of different types of pens. I honestly cannot think of an insulin that does not also come in pen form. I'm sure there's one I'm missing, but most of the mainstream insulins will come in pen form. So they come in like different concentrations. The U100 pens are pens like Novolog, Humalog, Lantus. And basically what U100 means is that there is 100 units per milliliter. So each pen has three mLs in it, which means that you will have 300 units per pen. So they do last you a while. If you are someone who takes like a lot of insulin, so maybe you take a lot of long-acting insulin or you take a lot of mealtime insulin, typically this is over 50 units per meal, you may notice that you're having to change out these pens a lot. So there are options for you. They have a U200 pen, which is available for Traceba, which is a long-acting insulin, and then Humlog, which is a short-acting insulin. So the U200 means that there are 200 units per ml so this would mean that you would be getting 600 units per pen so you're gonna have to change out that pen a lot less than you would if you were using those u100s alternatively you can also get tujeo which is a long-acting insulin and a u300 formula so you're getting 900 units per pen And then for people who are really using quite a bit of insulin and maybe have a lot of insulin resistance, there are also U500 pens which contain regular insulin. So this insulin is pretty different than the insulin we usually think of, the rapid-acting Novolog and Humalog. This one works a little bit more slowly. But if you are someone who's using quite a bit of insulin before your meals, then this is a really great option to discuss with your doctor. I will say that most of the pens only dial up one unit at a time. So that's kind of the disadvantage to using the insulin pens is that you don't really have the half unit options. So if you're someone who's very, very sensitive to insulin and you take very small amounts of it, This is pretty common for small children and just very lean people who don't take as much insulin. You can um, look into getting a Humalog Junior Quick Pen prescribed to you as this is one of the options for half units. Another option would be these Bluetooth-enabled pens, such as an InPen. I know Novo 
Nordisk has their own Bluetooth enabled pen. And these are really great too, because some of them will allow you to do the half units, but they will also connect to an app, which allows you to see how much insulin you've taken and how much you have on board. It gives you that extra tech aspect that you would get with an insulin pump, but you still get to use your pens. So even with all of those options, pretty much all of the pens are going to have the same parts to them. They may be different colors and have a little bit different kind of feel to the clicking and everything. But really, once you know how to use one type of pen, you know how to use them all. They are already pre-filled with insulin, as I mentioned. So there is typically about 300 units in here. So you can see in the reservoir how much insulin you have at a time. There is a little window here that allows you to see what dose you're dialing up. And then the little knob is right here and the injection button is over here. Alongside the pen, you will also have to familiarize yourself with the different types of pen needles. They come in a lot of different sizes. The one that is recommended for use with insulin is the four millimeter size. And you really want to use that one. There aren't too many reasons why you would want to use a longer needle. Some people feel that it's more comfortable for them and that's okay if you are not super lean. But the issue with using a long needle is you may hit muscle and we don't want that because when you put insulin in muscle, you're going to get a lot of sporadic blood sugar changes. It doesn't absorb in muscle as well as it does in fat. So you, you it's just not going to be as helpful to you. So just make sure that you're getting the four millimeter pen needle. So the next thing we'll talk about is where to inject your insulin pen. So as I mentioned before, insulin injects or absorbs the best in fat. So anywhere you got a good amount of fat is going to be very helpful. The place we always think of, of course, is the abdomen. So all around, usually you want to be about two inches away from the belly button. And you can really just go all the way around the abdomen and also to the lower back. So for insulin that you only take once a day. So that would be something like long-acting insulin. So Lantus, Basaglar, Traceba, Tujeo. Those we like to recommend that you be injecting into the abdomen exclusively just because that's going to be the place with the best absorption and you just want all of that insulin to get in there and do what it needs to do throughout that 24 hour plus period that that long acting insulin is acting. For the other types of insulins that you take like before your meals, so Novolog, Hemolog, Fiasp, Lumgev, all of those, you really you have more freedom with where you can put those so you can still use your abdomen but you can also move out to parts of your arm so the back of the arm where there's some fat there as well as your bottom you can also use the top of your thighs if you have some fat there as well and of course just going back to the abdomen is usually where people are the most comfortable doing it but please Please remember to rotate your sites. This is so important so that you're not building up a bunch of scar tissue or developing what we call lipohypertrophy, which is just this buildup of fatty deposits in that part where you've been injecting a lot. You just want to make sure that you rotate around Every time you're injecting, you're going to a new spot and you want to try to be a few inches away from the last spot that you injected. So some people kind of make a little diagram or just using different sites each time, going to a different side. I know this can be really kind of tricky because some of us maybe don't have enough fat down here or up here. and We really are just kind of hanging out in our abdominal area. 
but try to find different spots on those sites that you can inject into. If you build up scar tissue or those fatty deposits, you're basically going to get to the point where the insulin just doesn't absorb in those areas anymore. And then you won't be able to use those sites as frequently or at all because your insulin just isn't going to absorb. So do your best to find different spots. There is an app on the app store called Shot Put. And it's a little outdated looking, but it kind of keeps track of where you last put your site. So that's that can be really helpful, especially if you're just starting out and need some help with rotating. Okay, so you're going to start by getting all of your materials together. So really all you need is an insulin pen and a pen needle. The American Association for Diabetes Educators actually does not recommend or require that um, you swab everything with alcohol unless you are more at risk for skin infections, which you can talk about with your doctor if that is you. However, for like the general population, it really isn't necessary unless you just wanna be extra super duper clean. So I don't use alcohol swab, so I'm not gonna really demonstrate that because nobody has time for that. So really all you need is a pen and a pen needle. So this is in a Pedra pen, which is what we'll be looking at because it's beautiful. And it usually has a little cap that goes on it. You can keep these on there. I honestly just throw them away because they get in my way. So that's kind of up to you. Also makes nice little clicky sounds. So if you are have some difficulty seeing, this is really helpful because you can use the clicks to dial up your insulin. And you can go back and forth, so if you make a mistake, no problem. This is another way to check to see how much you got in there. Obviously, this has quite a bit. First step is to get all your materials together and then make sure you have your right insulin. They do have NPH which is a cloudy intermediate acting insulin. So that's the only time your insulin should be cloudy. If it's cloudy and you're using Novolog or something like that, then throw out this pen because it's not good. Just inspect that you have enough for your dose and that you have the correct insulin. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our needle ready. So you can see it's got a little wrapper here and you're just gonna peel it off like this. And now don't stick your finger in there, okay? And you can see on the pen, there's little threads. And so that's gonna go on here and you're gonna turn clockwise, righty tighty. And then you might hear a little, like a tightening sound. And that's just, just means that it's on. You won't be able to turn anymore. And that's how you know you've got it on nice and tight. Then you'll pull off the clear cap and make sure you save this. Then you'll take off the needle guard here carefully. You can throw this one away if you want to. So you got your needle on there, it's looking great. Now, every time you are about to inject, you wanna prime the needle. So this means that maybe you have a defective pen or you may have put the needle on incorrectly. We wanna make sure that it works before we inject ourselves because when you inject yourself, you won't be able to see if any insulin's coming out and if you didn't do it correctly or you have a defective pen, you'll never know and then you'll just be high and angry. So go ahead and when you're priming your needle, you'll dial up one, two or three units, whatever your preference is. There is a lot of extra insulin in there, so not too much of a problem. And you're going to push on the plunger and make sure that you see a stream of insulin come out or some little dribbles. So you can see there's a little bit of dribble in there. I like to see a good stream though. There you go. So especially when you have a new pen, you may have to do that a couple of times just cause it takes a little bit of extra priming. But every time you use a pen, make sure you check that there is insulin coming out of the needle. If there is not insulin coming out of the needle, go ahead and try to put another needle on. It may have been put on too loose or crooked or something like that. 
or you may have a pen that's just just not doing it for you and you'll have to talk to the manufacturer about getting a new one since the one you got was defective so we've primed our insulin pen and then you'll just dial up your dose so let's say you want to take I'm eating like a lot so I'm gonna take eight units so you can see we dialed it up to eight if we wanted to do an odd number they don't put it on here because they're mean but it's just in between the eight and the ten there pretty self-explanatory okay so we've dosed up our eight units we've picked our site we'll pretend this is our stomach you can pinch up with your skin if you have enough fat though it's not necessary try not to pinch up too much and then you're gonna go in at a 90 degree angle like that and then go ahead if you've been pinching let go of your skin so that you don't push any insulin out and when you're ready to inject you'll just press down on this plunger here and it'll make some satisfying clicking noise and once you've hit zero and you're unable to push any more just give it a little tap just make sure you get all of it and then you want to wait 10 seconds just so the insulin doesn't leak out of your skin after you pull the pen out so we'll pretend we waited 10 seconds and then you'll just pull straight out just like you came in and then you're gonna take that clear cap we saved and you're gonna put it back on the needle and now you're gonna turn the opposite direct direction lefty loosey counterclockwise and then just get under here and try to wiggle it off because sometimes it doesn't want to come off very well but it's just a little bit easier than taking the needle off bare and then you'll dispose of this in a sharps container all right so that's how you give yourself a insulin injection with a insulin pen go ahead and go to my website at www.givemesomesugar.coach slash insulin pen to download the free pdf guide with all of these step-by-step -step instructions